assembly we're going to discuss is the Wilkins Model 420, which is a pressure vacuum breaker produced in sizes 3 quarter and 1 inch. Production began around 1998. It's a pressure vacuum breaker, but it's got one unique feature in that in the top of the air inlet, it actually has a small little uh, relief valve to be there for in case of freeze damage, allowing the relief valve to go off so that if it does freeze at the increased pressure that's generated in a freeze condition does not rupture the assembly and can be replaced. Here's a breakdown of the Model 420. Here's a picture of it here. Inlet, outlet, shutoffs. Notice that the test cocks were mounted on the shutoffs, so if the shutoffs have to be replaced, make sure you put it with a tapped one where the test cock is in the right location for test procedures. Uh, canopy comes off, the bonnet assembly would unscrew on all sizes. Um, the air inlet float was unique, which we'll show you during the repair process. Check assembly and check seats were replaceable inside the unit. So this is the Model 420 pressure vacuum breaker with freeze protection. Here's a cutaway of a Model 420 pressure vacuum breaker. First thing before we get into it, you'll notice that the ball valves have the test cocks mounted on them. There are no test cocks mounted on the body. The two test cocks are mounted on the shutoffs. Why that becomes critical is if you replace the shutoffs because if you put a non-tapped test cock, you, I mean non-tapped ball valve, you would not have a place to put a test cock and couldn't test the unit. Also, if you put the ball valve on reversed, where this was on the outlet, you'd see you'd have no ball test cock there to perform a test. So anyway, assuming that the ball valves are on correctly, if you bought it, but a replacement, be careful. Re disassemble one screw from the top, removes our canopy. Canopies are an important part of all pressure vacuum breakers so things don't fall inside. Yes, it acts as a drain or a diverter for the water when it first turns on, a splash guard, but make sure it's there so things don't fall inside. Once I've got the canopy off, the bonnet assembly will unscrew from the top, sealed by an O-ring. Underneath it will be our float assembly. Next, we'll see our check assembly. We can take the spring retainer and push it down, but you can also grab the whole check seat which will come out in one piece. Once you've got it out, the easier to see it outside the body is you rotate that spring retainer like this. Release the spring tension, check spring, disc holder, disc sits inside the disc holder just like that. Seat is replaceable and there's our check seat at the Model 420. Now, the unique thing about this air inlet assembly Here's that little relief valve we mentioned that is in there for freeze protection. In other words, this acts as our air inlet like this, but when the area freezes up here, there's a small little relief valve inserted in the stem of the air inlet float and operates as a relief valve when, free, when pressure builds up from freezing and hopefully releases it so it doesn't damage the body. But back to this float assembly. Air inlets we know have to have a minimum one pound loading. Most of the models we see have a spring at this point. You'll notice there's no mechanical spring on this air inlet. The float assembly actually has two rubber folds and the spring load is actually generated by the fold of this rubber outlet here. In other words, you see this small little cut right there. There's two rings of rubber and the outer ring collapses outward like this which generates the load on our air inlet seat which is up here. The cut has to be there because if the cut wasn't there and this went out like this, it would actually create a vacuum between those two folds of rubber. So a lot of times people will see that cut and think something's wrong or broken with it or they'll get a new one and they'll say, oh, it was a damage. No, that cut has to be there for that reason. But how it generates its load is by the folding out of that outer coil. So reassemble. We can go ahead and put the seat back in the body if we wish or we can assemble it outside the body like this. Check assembly in place. Oops, there. Into the body. Now, the reason it's nice to do it outside the body is it's easier to check to make sure it's perfectly flat. It's easier to check to make sure it's sitting under those clips just like this because like all of the spring retainers, all of the PVBs that have a spring retainer like this, that flatness of that in relationship to that seat is critical to make sure the proper load is on it. Once we have it in place, now we can insert the check seat into the body, just like, just like that. Then we have our air inlet assembly, our bonnet. Go ahead and tighten those on top. O-ring seal, so hand tight's good enough canopy and this is our model 420 pressure vacuum breaker from Wilkins. 
Next assembly we're going to discuss is the Wilkins Model 460, presently produced in sizes 3 8 and half inch. It is a spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker. Production began around 2007. Here's a picture of what it looked like. Bronze body looks like bronze body unit. Uh, test cocks attached to the shutoff, so if the shutoff has to be replaced, proper type of shutoff has to be utilized. Repair process for it. Um, a little unique in that some of the parts of the body actually help you assemble it. In other words, the canopy on the top has a little uh, indent on the inside that allows you for disassemble of the bonnet. The bonnet has an indent that allows you to disassemble the check assembly. So it's unique in that it's a uh, the ability of taking it apart does require what constitutes a special tool, but the special tools are part of the body. So the bonnet has the part to remove, the canopy has the part to remove the bonnet, and the bonnet has the part to remove the check assembly. So there's a replaceable check seat. Uh, Aaron Lit is the spill resistant type. Let's go ahead and take one apart and see what it looks like. Here's a Wilkins Model 460 spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker. Um, important thing on the SVB is that it operates a little differently than the pressure vacuum breaker. Normal pressure vacuum breaker, when water first comes in, it opens a check valve and then closes an air inlet. Spill resistant vacuum breakers are just backwards. When the water first comes in, it closes the air inlet first and then opens the check valve. If you look at the specifications on these particular valves, it'll say that the first the check and the air inlet both have a minimum one pound loading. But to be a spill resistant vacuum breaker, there has to be a difference and the loading on the air inlet has to be less than the loading on the check. That's what will make sure that it closes first. Second thing to notice on the SVBs that are different is that there is only one test cock. The test cock happens to be mounted into the uh, ball valve and there's only one. Instead of having an outlet test cock like we do on a PVB, it has an outlet bleed valve. And this was designed to make sure that there was a visual indication of a difference between a PVB and an SVB so somebody didn't confuse them. Because if you didn't test it correctly, you may get the incorrect data on the working of that assembly. So to make sure it was different, we had the bleed screw and one test cock. The Wilkins SVB uses an oversized screw for its air bleed, which is very helpful during test procedures and it actually has an o-ring seal on the inside of that bolt and if you notice that they have the hatch marks on the thread so that it will bleed the uh, pressure out of the area to atmosphere very quickly which is very helpful during test procedures one bolt screw holds the canopy on the top now the model 460 was very helpful in its production because they use parts to help disassemble it notice that cross hatch design on the bonnet that happens to fit the same as on the canopy which gives me a little more leverage to go ahead and unscrew the bonnet as it comes off that way i don't have to place channel locks or pliers on there to unscrew it once i unscrew the bonnet it comes off with the spring now the stem assembly in one piece will come out next it's held in by an o-ring so work it back and forth comes out in one piece body goes over here now, first thing we want to do is disassemble the air inlet and the check valve down below. To disassemble the air inlet, we're going to unscrew the retainer on the top. Underneath the retainer will be our poppet assembly and our rolling diaphragm for the air inlet. As I said earlier, to be an SVB, when the water first comes into this assembly from the bottom, the air inlet has to have the lower loading so that that will close first. Once the air inlet closes, now the check valve can open up and allow water into the system. So that's what makes an SVB different than a PVB. Now to go ahead and disassemble the check, you'll notice that there's a cross hatch here on the bottom. If you take the bonnet assembly, you'll notice that same cross hatch right there. It happens to fit right in there. It gives us another little tool to disassemble our check valve by using our bonnet. Unscrew like this, releases the check valve, check spring, check seat. Reassembly is going to be just the reverse. Get it started by hand. Once we have it started, using our bonnet as our wrench, allows us to tighten the check seat back in to there. Our rolling diaphragm first, make sure we're rolling it down, sitting in the recess. Pop it sits in the center. Retainer over the rolling diaphragm. Tighten. Insert back in the body, sealed by an O-ring right there. Make sure the O-ring's properly lubricated. Pressing stem assembly all the way down in. Bonnet assembly on top. To tighten the bonnet assembly, we use our canopy. Reassemble, put the canopy on top, and our canopy screw.
And that's our Model 460 spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker from Wilkins. The next assembly we're going to discuss is the Wilkins Model 720 and the Model 720A. These are pressure vacuum breaker assemblies. Production began way back in 75 under the original name was SMR, which stood for Surgical Mechanical Research Company. About 1978-ish, it was sold to the Neptune Meter Company who produced it during those years. And in 1984, Wilkins bought it and started producing the assembly and it's still in production today. Here's a pressure vacuum breaker, as I say. Uh, bronze body construction. Inlet from the bottom, outlet. Uh, test cocks were screwed into the body. The test cocks were something unique on this version because up until about oh, around 2000-ish uh, before then, the test cocks that were utilized were not the standard uh, screwdriver type quarter turn ball valve uh, test cock, but they were actually a needle valve that screwed right into the body. And just like these, in order to get water out of that, you had to rotate that needle valve a half a turn to get water to come out of it. So you'd go ahead and hook your test apparatus up onto it and then you'd have to unscrew the whole test cock half a turn to get the water to come out. They did replace that needle valve type with the standard uh, quarter turn ball valve type test cock all around the 2000-ish. And here's the breakdown of the assembly. Half through one inch size here, the inch and a quarter through two on the right side here. Uh, check seats were cast in the body and not replaceable. Check disc, check spring, poppet assembly, which was rather unique, which we'll show you during the repair process, bonnet assembly, and canopy. So this is the model 720 pressure vacuum breaker produced in sizes half through two inch. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Next assembly we're going to discuss is the Wilkins model 720. 720 is a pressure vac vacuum breaker produced in sizes half through two inch. Been produced under three names over the years, SMR, Neptune, and Wilkins. Obviously Wilkins producing it today. Uh, disassemble, we have three screws on the canopy on the top. Canopy, as we've mentioned several times with PVBs, is not just a splash guard, but make sure things don't fall inside. To unscrew the canopy, we're going to use a small screwdriver. It allows us to twist on our three posts that hold the, the canopy on. It is an O-ring seal underneath. So remove our bonnet, our air inlet seat, our air inlet poppet, and the O-ring sits in its slot right here. Now to disassemble, to remove the check assembly, we have to remove the check spring. Using a small screwdriver, you're gonna place it and push down on one side. What that'll do is flip up the other side. By placing the other side with a screwdriver underneath it, we're gonna go ahead and pull the spring out in one piece just like that. Spring comes out like this. Check assembly will come out next. And that's the Model 720 parts, what it looks like outside the body. The check assembly comes apart like this. Spring sits on it. There's a small little lip right here on the body underneath the check O-ring, so it compresses down under there. So when I told you I had to push one side down to remove it, what you're doing is pushing this down, which flips that up, which allows you to get a screwdriver under this side and pull the spring out. It's a cone or conical shaped spring, so the inner coils foil up, fold up on the other one. So the largest coil, which is on the top, happens to fold right underneath there. Air inlet looks like this. We know an air inlet has to have a minimum of a one pound loading and most assemblies that we see on the market today have some kind of a mechanical spring. The 720 is unique and you'll notice there is no spring. We have our bonnet, we have our air inlet seat, and we have our float assembly, but we have no spring. What we have in this is what's called a, ru a, a, a rubber fold. It's not a mechanical spring like we're used to, like the check assembly. And here's a two inch one so you can see it a little easier. The way this operates is as the water comes in from the bottom, it causes the check assembly to rise up against the seat. And when it rises, you'll notice that there are two rolls of rubber on the top of that air inlet poppet float. The outer roll is designed to go outwards and the inner roll is what actually seals. If you'll notice, there's a cut in the outer fold right here. A lot of times I've had people pick that up and say, oh, it's damaged, it's got a cut into it. No, there's supposed to be a cut there because that outer fold acts as my spring or generates the load for my, what normally would be a spring. So as it folds outward, it generates a load as it goes to close. If that cut wasn't there and this just squirted out sideways like this, it would actually create a vacuum between those two folds. So the fold makes sure that it's generating its load um, as an air inlet opening. So if you have trouble with the air inlet opening, you are going to have to replace the entire float assembly because that's what generates that load. Let's go ahead and put it back together. First thing we have to do is put the check assembly in place. It's going to go into the bottom like that. Check spring goes next. 
Now, with a cone or conical shaped spring, what we're going to do is when we put it in the body, we're just going to start twisting it. And as we twist it, it corkscrews down where the, the smaller coils come up till the bigger coil hits this lip. And as we go to turn it just like that, just start working the coils underneath that lip. As I say, you go around in a corkscrew fashion. Obviously, you can't twist the body installed, but you walk around, get it so that that upper coil's under there. I want to stop at this point because I want to show the test cocks. Test cocks that have been utilized in the 720 have been two basic types. There's either the standard test cock like we're used to seeing with the screwdriver slot or the older ones like this which had a large boss on them and it actually had a quarter turn needle valve. You had to rotate the needle valve a full half a turn before you would release any kind of water out of it for proper test procedures. So you could have the old needle valve type or you could have the current test cock type depending which version you had. Reassembling of the air inlet bonnet, airlet seat, airlet float, pushing in from the top, replacing the o-ring underneath my bonnet. Go ahead and tighten it in. It's an o-ring seal, so it doesn't require a lot of torque to get it to seal. Just getting it tight is good. Canopy back on top. Three screws hold it in place. This is our Wilkins Model 720 pressure vacuum breaker.